Hi, Year 6. Welcome to the second uh, English lesson this week. Um, let me just share my screen so that we can get started with today's lesson. Brilliant. So today is Tuesday, the 23rd of February 2021. And our learning objective today is to find information and understand the use of brochures. OK, so don't worry about that for now. Let's have a recap of yesterday's lesson. We had a look at the purpose of brochures. What was this? Do you remember? Pause the screen and have a think. Brilliant. Hopefully you said it's to provide information and to persuade an audience. Now, thinking about your purpose for the brochure you're going to make, you're, you're providing information about your theme park, um, the services you provide, the rides that you might um, have at the theme park, maybe some food, um, and also to persuade your audience, the, the potential customers, to come to your theme park. Brilliant, well done. Okay, let's have a look at the starter. So what I'd like you to do is read the following text. We'll read it together, don't worry. And all you're gonna do is highlight words or phrases which you think make uh, whatever the captain is saying, um, make the uh, passengers feel cared for. So what has the captain said which makes the passengers feel cared for? Okay, let's read this together. Welcome to Animal Airlines. This is your captain speaking. We will do everything we can to ensure that you have an enjoyable and comfortable flight. Our highly trained crew will endeavor to meet your every need. The meerkats will provide an in-flight entertainment. Our koalas can bring you a variety of snacks. The sloths will take care of your luggage and the giraffes will give excellent foot massages. For those of you wanting a good night's sleep, we have an excellent range of relaxing whale music available. Or if it's a party you're after, we have our in-flight music playing in the rear cabin, courtesy of the monkeys. Once again, we wish you a comfortable and enjoyable flight, and we can assure you that you have every confidence in me as your captain. Everyone knows polar bears are extremely reliable. Okay. So I also have um, some words here, comfortable and enjoyable. Now those were repeated over here, okay? Now, what I want you to do is after you've uh, written down, I know you won't be able to highlight, um, sorry. Um, instead of highlighting, what I'd like you to do is write down all the words or phrases that you think make the um, customers feel like they're cared for. And once you're done, can you come up with a synonym um, or more um, ambitious words to replace comfortable and enjoyable. Okay, pause the screen here, have a go. And when you're done, I will share my answers. Brilliant, okay. So here are the stuff that, here's the stuff that I highlighted. So I've highlighted, we will do everything we can to ensure you have an enjoyable and comfortable flight. Okay, so you might have highlighted, we will do everything we can to ensure dot, 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 okay. Um, you may have highlighted highly trained crew because if the true if the crew is um really if, if the crew is really well trained, then the flight feels a lot more safer and therefore as a passenger you might feel more cared for. Um, meet your every need, okay. Similar to we can ensure you have uh, we can do everything we can meet your every need, okay? Putting the customer at the top, making them feel like they are the most important. Words like entertainment, variety, excellent, relaxing, take care of your. These words might pop out to a, a passenger and might make them feel that what they've paid for is, is at a high quality. They're getting entertainment, a variety of snacks excellent foot massages they're not just okay foot massages um and uh here at the end we can assure that you can have every confidence that's a great phrase there and that can definitely make passengers feel that they are cared for that what they've paid for is the highest quality and uh, finally extremely reliable okay not not a little reliable, extremely reliable. All right, so these words hopefully were the ones that you wrote down. Um, and finally, if we look at comfortable and enjoyable, well, I've got safe and delightful. T 
to replace those two words. Maybe you might have got the same. Maybe you got some more extravagant words there. Um, well done, everybody. Now let's move on. OK, so our learning objective today is to retrieve. Um, so today we're using our retrieval skills to locate information from our model text. So this is a skill that you've been working on in reading, in your reading lessons. And um, all you need to do in this lesson is to apply. So you're taking those skills and um, you're applying those skills um, and putting them um, in this lesson. OK, um, so the aim of using your retrieval skills um, hopefully will help you to understand the purpose of a brochure. So why we need a brochure in the first place in terms of um, the information aspect. And also it should help you to um, understand what kinds of things can help the reader, can help your audience find um, information a lot easier. Okay, so uh, let's move on and have a go at this. So we're going to have a look at example one. So this was in the um, in yesterday's lesson. You had a look at this brochure as well as other examples. But we're going to have a look at just the first page of example one. Um, so uh, we're going to try and find some in information together. But if you would like a more clear copy, feel free to go to Teams and um, have a look at the English file and the document brochure examples will be in there for you to access. Um, and I've got it written here in case you forget what I just said. Um, okay, so uh, let's have a go at the first question. It says, find and copy what the cliffs in bedrock are made from. Now, while I answer this question, I want you to have a think about what kinds of things I'm doing, the process that I'm going through in order to answer these questions. Okay, so let's do this together. Find and copy what cliffs, sorry, what the cliffs in bedrock are made from. Okay, so first I'm going to get my highlighter and I need to find and copy what the cliffs in bedrock are made from. Okay, so I'm just finding and I'm copying. That's what the question is asking from me. Now, uh, my keywords here that I've highlighted are cliffs and bedrock. These are the two words that are going to help me uh, retrieve the correct information. So if I zoom in a little bit to uh, the brochure, again, we're just looking at the first page. Don't worry about the second page of this brochure. So I'm finding and copying what the cliffs in bedrock are made from. So if I scan my um, example, I can see by using the uh, subheadings that it says bedrock in this one here and the other ones don't have bedrock written in them. Now with a subheading, everything underneath should um, have information about the subheading. OK, so hopefully my um, information should be in this section here under the subheading bedrock and history. And I'm looking there because my keyword is bedrock. So let me scan the text. Explore 280 million years of history. Walk the cliffs. Oh, that's a key word. OK, let me continue. So walk the cliffs made from ancient dunes and river deposits in the Permian and Triassic geological eras. Ah, OK, so I think I found my answer. It says that the cliffs were made from ancient dunes and river deposits. So as the question is asking me to find and copy, let me do just that. So uh, the cliffs in bedrock are made from ancient dunes and river deposits. So if I make that smaller for you to see, there we go. So um, the cliffs in bedrock are made from ancient dunes and river deposits. So we've answered that question. OK, can you please have a go at question two? It says, what evidence is there to tell you where the lake coast is located? So before you get started, what did what was the first thing that I did? Well done. I got my highlighter and I highlighted my key 
words and what the question is asking. So it's asking for evidence to tell us where the lake coast is located. So here are the keywords. Hopefully that should help you to find some information to answer this question. You're looking for evidence. So pause the screen here. Um, I can move this up if you can see this and find evidence um, which shows where the lake coast is located. So you're looking for a location. Pause the screen, have a go and we'll go through this together. Brilliant, how did that go? Well, hopefully you would have realized that uh, you may have used the subheadings just like how I did um, with the first one with bedrock. You might have found that these two subheadings say lake coast and hopefully you would have scanned the text and then found that actually the information wasn't there. Um, and what you hopefully would have done is then scanned this section again and found that it says the lake coast lies in the heart of the Murray Firth microclimate, okay? So hopefully you would have written that as your answer. The lake, the lake coast is located in the heart, I'm gonna quote this of the, uh, what does it say? The heart of the Murray Firth microclimate. The heart of the Murray Firth microclimate. Okay, so that is my evidence, which shows that, um, which shows the location of the lake coast. Okay. Brilliant. So can you please have a go at the last question? You are asked to find three ways in which you can travel between Findhorn and Hopeman. So remember to use um, different features to help you answer this question. I'm not going to highlight any keywords just yet. Pause the screen and have a think which words would you highlight before you get started with answering this question. Brilliant. Hopefully you said find three ways, okay? So you know you need to find three uh, three reasons or three ways in which you can travel. So that hopefully would have been a keyword between Findhorn and Hopeman. Hopefully those were some keywords that you highlighted. Can you please have a go at finding this information to answer your question? You are finding three ways. Pause the screen and have a go at answering that. Brilliant. Did you use the pictures to help you um, find the um, answers? Well, I definitely did use the pictures because I found that um, none of the subheadings helped me in terms of um, uh, my keywords, which says travel and find horn, uh, find horn and hopeman. So I then looked at the um, pictures to help me. So I saw a map and I thought, oh, a map that's related to travel. Let me have a look around this section to see if my information's there. Now, when I scan this, it just tells me places to stay and uh, places to eat. And that's nothing to do with travel. Um, and if I look at the small uh, words here, you might have a better, um, view of it on the document that I've given you but if you have a look at the words here you'd find that there wasn't any information on travel. So now looking at some other pictures I can see there's boats here. Now boats are linked to travel so let me have a look at what's written underneath. It says walk, cycle, drive or take a boat between Findhorn, Burghead, Hopeman and Lozimuth. Okay so there we go there's our um answer is says you can walk, cycle, drive or take a boat between Findhorn and Hopeman. So I will get um, to my question and let me write my answer here. So um, uh, three ways in which you can travel. So see I'm using um, the question to help me okay. Uh, in terms of constructing my answer. Three ways in which you can travel between Findhorn and Hopeman are, 
I'm going to do a colon uh, because I'm going to do a list. So um, it says walk, cycle, drive or take a boat. And I need to find three ways. So I'm going to choose three of those and I'm going to say cycle, oops, cycle, um, drive or take a boat. Okay, so that was my answer for that question. Hopefully you would have got the same. Um, now, um, having a think about what we did together in terms of finding the, these answers, can you think about the process, we, the process we used to find these answers to help us come up with our success criteria? So what did we use to help us find the correct information? Pause the screen and have a think. And when you're done, let's go through this together. Brilliant. Hopefully you would have thought that we need to underline the key words in the question. Well, I highlighted and um, unfortunately you may not be able to um, highlight um, or underline the words, but a good thing, a good point uh, to make is to write down the keywords that you're looking for and that might help you a little bit more. Okay. The second one, hopefully you thought locate appropriate subheadings, just like we did. Do you remember with bedrock? And then we had a look at the other subheadings for the next questions. Um, then hopefully you scanned for key words and the key words are the words that we highlighted like cliffs, bedrock, lake coast, okay? And uh, then hopefully you read above and below. So when we looked at, um, when we looked at um, the image of the boats, we decided, ah, oh, let's see what's below it, okay? You might have checked what's above it, um, but that's the kind of thought process you need with this idea of reading above and below. And then you will construct an appropriate answer. So this is your success criteria um, for today's lesson in order to be successful in retrieving so that's our learning objective to retrieve uh, in retrieving the correct information. OK, so what I'd like you to do is head on over to Teams and complete the quiz, which will challenge your ability to to locate information in our model text. Um, so please uh, go to the English file to get the model text up so you can have a clear um, look at it. Um, I can zoom in if this does help where you can pause the screen here and uh, return to the video if that's easier. Um, what I'd also like you to do is refer to the success criteria if you are if you are unsure of how to answer the questions. Remember, think about what the question is asking from you. Okay, here we were asked to find and copy. Simple. We found uh, the answer and we copied it. Then it says uh, for this question, what evidence? So then I used um, my uh, inverted commas to um, quote the uh, evidence to back up my answer. This question, our third question said, find three ways. So I made sure I wrote not one, not two, but three ways um, uh, in which we can travel between the two places they asked for, okay? So please head over to Teams and um, complete the activity. Um, and that is the end of the lesson. So I will see you tomorrow. Bye.